Hello and welcome to Rule of Carnage. I'm Mike Hutchinson, a game designer. That's Glenn Ford, a game designer. Uh, and we are going to talk about designing better miniature war games and probably a bunch of other things as well. So we are going to uh, play a little game ourselves. <laughs> We've got our uh, our sheets of ideas, our notebooks, our ring bound uh, notebooks full of uh, wacky game ideas that we haven't yet implemented. And we thought we would have a go at pitching them to each other and uh, I'll probably pitch about five ideas to Glenn. Glenn will probably pitch about five ideas to me and we will be brutally assessing whether or not we would play uh, this idea or not. Fantastic. Uh, so do you want to open with the first of the pitch battles? Um, pitch battle. Let's, yeah, let's alternate. All right. So uh, I'm going to hit you with an idea. Um, should we be grabbing? Should we be grabbing toys where we have them? Um, I don't have any toys within grabbing range. But All right. So, sometimes, to... sometimes my ideas work better with toys. Okay, so uh, you've played Gaslands, the game, post-apocalyptic uh, game of car combat and racing. But have you ever imagined playing Gaslands, colon, Pirate of the Rad Seas? <laughs> it's a tank with... This is also known uh, as the other subtitle I've got is Gaslands, the gas done run out. <laughs> so uh, I've, I've uh, often wanted to uh, design a, a sort of sail game, an age of sail game, something about uh, ships uh, poodling about and broadsiding each other. But what if the ships were tanks and uh, the broadsides were uh, post-apocalyptic scrap launchers? So uh, it would be a... a, 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 a skirmish level uh tank and probably other trucks here's a truck with a with a shale <laughs> and the um the game would be about uh the all the chaos and fun of uh the gaslands movement templates but with a um uh with a system of the sort of wind and your position against the wind controls which templates you can use and uh you can fire um you can fire broadsides using the Gaslands templates whilst making uh, cannon noises. Uh, what do you reckon? Would you play that? I mean, uh, uh, an old fan of Man of War. Um, we, I, I've got a, a hefty collection of uh, Pirates of the Spanish Main uh, punch out ships uh oh, those are waiting so i love those i i i love i love those things so much why aren't why <laughs> Why, 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 why do we it, love those things so much? I, yeah, I mean, I just, it's, it's, uh, you know, it, they're dead. I, I, I assume Mike is grabbing a handful of them. Little, little punch out <laughs> ships <laughs> that, cu that, that come as a card. They, they come as a piece of card that you can get in a booster pack, and it's a ship miniature. Why is that not the best thing in the world? It is. The best um, so, the any There's no argument. <laughs> anything that would give me an excuse to play with those and doubly so since i've already got a uh, a team of gaslands um cars that already have sails on them because i long ago thought that why would you waste gas on your way between the races so i, I would be halfway to that anyway and who wouldn't want more gaslands with people firing chickens at each other from broadsides so okay so I'd, gaslands I'd, pirate I'd, of the rad sea i would i would i would play that would play all right, Glenn, what, what do you got? Okay, um, so something that I've been fuddling with and I've mentioned the idea of you to, uh, to you before would be um, <clears throat> ELE, Extinction Level Event, the game of ongoing survival horror. Um, so if you've ever played a, uh, an ongoing campaign game and wondered why the leader just gets called the leader because they've been picked that, wonder why it is that if somebody's brother dies on a mission, the, their, their sibling doesn't then hate the person that was leading the mission. Uh, Extinction Level Event would be a uh, skirmish game with a involved uh, campaign mode where the relationships between the members of your uh, compound, your community, affect their in-game effectiveness. So instead of having just buffs that are just laid on you, if you are the most respected, the person that has the best and strongest relationships of everybody else who's on the mission with you, you'll get buffs from them helping you out and they'll get buffs helping you out. If you take a group on a mission and somebody dies, when you come back, people who have a strong relationship with that person, they're going to lose a relationship to you. 
And so it's uh, it's going to be an ongoing narrative survival horror. If you think about something like um, The Walking Dead, where there's a constant ongoing set of relationships within your group, managing how people feel about things, realizing that you need to return, uh, repair a relationship with somebody because somebody they love died on your watch. So you've got to take them out with you. Um, you know, forge a bond of blood within the field and, and have that payback and manage uh, uh, a post-apocalyptic community where everybody is infected and everything is rolling towards uh, a, a, a sort of fairly awful conclusion. That would be that would be extinction level event. Hmm. That. One, qu- one qualifying question. When you say a narrative skirmish game, are the missions um themselves quite narrative or does the narrative come mostly from the campaign and progression progression system of the characters so the the mission the missions are going to have a little bit of narrative in them but they're going to be relatively simple uh because they're going to be an ongoing search for supplies rather than it's not a world in which there are lots of people hanging around to interact with um and even other players you're going to want to negotiate rather than engage um, mm-hmm. you're going to want to find a way to get in and out with risk is the primary managing uh system of the game so you're going to want to get in get the supplies you need to survive you're not going to be hanging around to kick the other guy's teeth in and add over supply yourself because every moment in the field increases the chances of infection interesting well i like the Malifaux sort of character driven skirmish idea and this feels like a character driven skirmish game where I invent the characters rather than being given them and I also like skirmish games that aren't necessarily about knocking everybody's teeth out but uh, achieving some other things so um, I think I'm a tentative yes on this I tend to not like things about uh, people's interactions as much as I like uh, heavy objects smashing into a hub, other heavy objects, but this one's got me. <laughs> this one's got me intrigued, so I'm a I'm a yes to play this one. Okie dokie. Uh, what's next on your list then? Uh, what's next on my list? Let's see if I got some props here. Um, what's next on my list is this is my uh, this is my game design white whale. So here is a tiny tiny little uh, modern jet fighter. Can you see that? It's yes. a tiny little modern jet fighter. Now. The idea of a jet fighter and a miniature and a tabletop miniatures game is ridiculous. It's ludicrous. We already know it's ludicrous from other large scale 28 mil games, which have flyers, which for some reason travel, you know, 20 inches rather than just like six miles. Um, so I want to know if uh, if Afterburner, a World War Three jet combat game could be achievable. And right now, my uh, my idea is um that there are two stages of the game so it's a um it's a game in which uh there aren't really turns there are sort of narrative acts and the first narrative act is called uh, the approach and that is about negotiating the interception by uh, enemy uh, enemy craft and then the second phase of the game is called uh, the target where you actually need to engage the target uh, you know do the bombing run or destroy the whatever the thing is and uh, negotiate more of the sort of Uh, final ground assets and so on and uh, in terms of the mechanics of the game it right now the way that it doesn't really work but I dream that it will work (laughs) is that it uses uh, mini scale uh, Gaslands templates are the ones that are scaled down to micro machines and um, rather than moving your uh, um, jet fighter you move everything else on the board relative to you and um, it frankly is probably a solo game. Uh, it's being written as a solitaire game. Um, so it's an opportunity to uh, use some nice um, sort of epic scale or smaller scale uh, terrain and sort of set up a couple of uh, combat um, scenarios where you need to negotiate the, um, the oncoming enemy forces in two phases, the approach and then the target. What do you think? I mean, uh, you know, everybody wants to uh, play Top Gun. I think mm-hmm. if if there if there's if there's a volleyball phase in between missions, that would probably be a be a, be, a, be a strong winner. I think I think you know if if you make if you if you believe if you get to a point where you confidently say that you think it works, 
uh, then then you know I'd certainly give it a try out. Um, it would be it'd be interesting if it's if it's not too much of a solo puzzle. I would be interested in it. Mm-hmm. Um, if it if if it works sort of narratively and and it gets working, I I I think I'd stick that on the table. I I have a I have a, ra- a a sort of circulation of solo games, and I'm always up for more miniature solo games. So if 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 you if you make it work, then yes, so that that has that has to be a sort of given that at the moment <laughs> your opinion is, hi, this definitely doesn't work, but. <laughs> If the butt happens, then 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 a yes. Fantastic. All right. Well, maybe maybe we'll spend another uh, half an hour at some point talking about uh, my white whale and digging in. I mean, why uh, why dog fighting has been done and why two objects traveling at Mach three <laughs> towards each other don't make a good tabletop skirmish game. <laughs> yeah. If well, if if you get somebody to throw a tennis ball across you and then you throw a tennis ball at that moving tennis ball and see if you hit it. That's the explanation as to why it's a uh, f- <laughs> physical resolution combat systems underused in miniature skirmish games. There's a fantastic game called Caveman where you have to throw wads of uh, paper at each other's miniatures to hit with uh, <laughs> missile weapons. More of that, please. All right, that's um, okay. So that was Afterburner World War Three Jet Combat. That's that was a sort of lukewarm response, but uh, if it if it, if if it, if it works, it'll work. Uh, I, in in relation to sort of uh, white whales of uh, skirmish game design uh one of uh, and i've spoken to this before horror and humor i think are the things that i'm constantly trying to get to work and so one of the ideas that's on my desktop at the moment is soylent ghoul um <laughs> that's just to, fun to the, say i it's uh, that that phrase came into my if 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 ghouls are created when you eat another human body and if soylent green is made from people there's an obvious uh, post-apocalyptic horror world, which is Soylent Ghoul. Um, so Soylent Ghoul is a horror game where the horror isn't simply uh, within the descriptions and the world. There's a mechanic central to the game, um, which is about every force has a way of dropping things outside of your line of sight that might be a problem and might not be a problem and you always have the opportunity to react to it the more you react the more paranoid you become the more you react to things that aren't a problem the more out of control you then become as you the fear gets a hold of you and you lose control and so the characters themselves within the game are going to be suffering from a fear mechanic but the players themselves are going to have a building paranoia as the tokens dropped around them could be something fatal could be something minor so hopefully it's a game where you have a horror experience within the playing of the game rather than the background and surroundings of the game um, and that's that. There was but the phrase "soul and ghoul." The the author uh, uh, Thomas Ligotti, uh, if you've seen any of his stuff, very weird sort of uh, post Lovecraftian um, Italian horror, um, and a lot of sort of ideas of a very dark, um, insidious horror uh, world that that's building. So that that would be that would be soil and ghoul. That would be the, the the thing that I'm shooting for is an experience. And, that, and of, is that head that is that head to head? Yes, yes, that would be a head to head game. So each of the forces are so each each ghoul bloodline works in a certain way. Uh, so for example, you've got um, a force that have lanterns. Um, anything outside of the uh, glow of their lantern gets sort of pulled down uh, into the earth by these sort of hands that that push into you as they pull you down. Um, the lantern is more powerful the smaller the light it is, um, but every time you reduce the light, there's the opportunity for it to go out and for you to be pulled down by your lantern a little bit. And you Wow, power okay, so I, I, I was totally a no until you actually gave me an example of what the game would be like. So uh, <laughs> that, that, that's interesting because I think your elevator pitch, whilst coherent, didn't like I, I didn't have any picture of like why that was exciting um i was just like in my mind i was like so is it going to be a bit like perilous, perilous tales with some sort of hidden tokens that i need to worry about 
And then you were like, and there's a lantern mechanic and stuff starts getting drawn into the like, oh, well, no, ah, yes. <laughs> but yeah, that's, yes, that sounds cool. I'm, I'm now, I'm now, I'm now up. <laughs> yes, is is the 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 shadows are a terrible thing in this world, and it's the way that the various ghouls use your line of sight and use. So some people, if you can see them, they're a problem. If you can't see them, they're they're a problem. And it's 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 a thing to get you to in the game go. What was that? And every time you do that wrongly, it eats into you a little bit. So nice. That that would be soy, Soylent Ghoul. Cool. Uh, yeah. All right. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm interested. I uh, I like the idea. I think the the idea of a dark table with fog of war, where you can only see and react so far, has been done a few times, but it's never quite been nailed. And I think that's a that's a lovely that's a lovely thing to. Um, to try and work, get working on the tabletop. So what's uh, what's Mike's next idea? Uh, so my third idea, so to pitch to you, um, I actually can't remember whether we played a very early prototype of this. Uh, so uh, the Frosted Flagon, Tavern Brawls in a Fantasy Realm. So this is uh, very simply a, um, a sort of gang, a, 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 a warband gang skirmish game so far so normal with you know mm -hmm. wizards and archers and barbarians so far so normal which takes place indoors in a very destructible environment of a tavern with okay. lots of uh furniture and stuff that can be hurled around but very critically has a very central drunkenness mechanic where right. the position of people's drinks really matters how much you've drunk and uh, whether you are going to spend time drinking or fighting or what have you. And um, as well, we know there is an optimum level of drunkenness. Uh, and so <laughs> the game role. is about managing a resource um, as much as anything uh, within a sort of chaotic gameplay where there's lots of um, sort of f f tomfoolery and turnovers and um, the activation order is quite... Um, uh, is quite chaotic because you you essentially activation is controlled by a deck of cards and you, you get some cards in your hand and so you have to uh, react to the cards that you've got in hand and you also have to make sure that you are exactly as drunk as you need to be and no drunker um, but of course other people will be forcing booze down your head whilst um, clobbering you with uh, bar stools so that's uh, yeah that's the frosted flag and tavern brawls in a fantasy realm I mean, I'm I'm inherently interested in the idea of dynamic uh, environments for skirmish games. There's there's a game, uh, a print and play that I've got up on the website called Pirates, um, where you're fighting on a ship which pitches in yours, and so any sort of anything that isn't nailed diet down might swing past and take your legs which out from under you. It probably wasn't clear what you just said. Glenn has developed a very lovely uh, <laughs> skirmish game where things move around because the, the boat is rocking from side to side. And so you're trying to have a fight, but everything's sliding towards you. Yes, yes, yes. There is, yeah, it's on, yeah, it, it, it's, it's all, there's, there's a free version on the website and a very, very cheap to, uh, to download version. Link in the, the description website. below or, yeah, we'll psychically put it into your, uh, there, yeah, there, there are links around and that's, and that's sort of built around the fact that once you lose your feet, it's possibly more fatal than being stabbed. Um, and so that's something that I, that I'm very much interested in. If the, yeah, if the drunken mechanic works and, stumbling drunks um flail around and you need to sort of play a, a risk resolution thing with drinking a little bit but knowing that he's about to shove an entire bottle of whiskey into you um on on his turn yeah i I'd, I'd, I'd be interested to play it it sounds like a, a nice it'd, it'd be interesting to see as a filler skirmish game i yeah, want to yeah, see yeah, a yeah. filler skirmish game in the world maybe the tagline is like it's a beer and pretzels game but we're all out of pretzels <laughs> <laughs> yes I would, I would i would i would love to see a a, a filler skirmish game something that you can whack out um, get get onto the tabletop quickly knock about be silly and uh, and, and and package away um okay uh, something that popped into my head um where i was uh giving feedback on somebody else's idea um and it's something that i've never seen and experienced in some games and not seen on tabletop and this would be the uh my version of a cyberpunk skirmish game mm -hmm. 
So the thing that for me that was always central back in the sort of 80s, 90s to cyberpunk is that there's two overlapping worlds. There's a matrix and there's a physical world. And you almost always had a team where some, you had your street samurai who were piling through the building while the hacker was going through a cyberspace version of the building, trying to open the doors, shut off the cameras so that the street samurai could do their job. What I want is a skirmish game where you physically got the hackers um, cyberspace representation on the table and you've got the, uh, the, the, the street samurai, the fighters on the table. The uh, terrain is the real world terrain, which is also mirrored in the Matrix version of it. And your hackers have to work against the opponent's defensive um, ice and your... Uh, your fighters have to so it'll be a, an asymmetric skirmish game so you're playing two games on the same table with one group who can't directly interact with the other group but can interact with them by proxy so the hackers can open the doors or lock the doors uh for the street samurai and the security forces the security forces can shoot out or or you know re reattach a camera and you're you're managing these two different forces um simultaneously on the same tabletop and that that i would like to 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 see happen that's a very and so is the is the terrain do i have two mirrored sets of terrain one sprayed neon purple and one painted like concrete or is it that there are elements in the painted like concrete terrain which are neon purple and can't be touched by the street samurai so so, so there are so there are elements of so you've got one tabletop which yeah. is the, the the physical world yeah. and elements within the physical world do or don't exist in the hackers world. So the the hackers version can walk through certain walls in order to get to access panels for security doors. Mm -hmm. um, the other hackers also exist in so the defensive ice exists in the same world as the hackers. Um, and so you're on the same tabletop, your relative space in relation to each other is relevant, but only in a very specific and modulated fashion. And how um, do you do you imagine like is this a DIY skirmish game? Do I build all this stuff or do you imagine providing tokens for the ice walls that I can't walk my hacker ghost through? How does how does it work? I mean, I, I imagine things being uh, being very DIY, and this is this is one of the questions <clears throat> that I often have with one of my more my more sort of um, terrain intensive and singular designs, um, where I will tend to play test on a roll of wallpaper with walls drawn in Sharpie pen. And it's completely fantastic if you have access to that amount of walls or don't mind playing on a large piece of paper with Sharpie pen. And then you say, okay, now build yourself uh, 50 or 60 modular walls and put them in a certain place, as I say. And that, that, this, that is that, figuring that out and making that work with a normal human being's terrain set is the place where this one uh, lives or dies, I would imagine. Yeah, so I love the theme of the netrunner card game i uh like some elements of the infinity hacking mechanics um i think that uh reality's edge by joey mcguire is an interesting read but i haven't got it onto the table yet i am intrigued by the problem that you're trying to solve and <laughs> i think if this like if if it ended up working I mean, ba basically, I'm intrigued by the problem you're trying to solve. You haven't sold me on it. I don't, mm. What from what I'm hearing, I don't want to play it, but I do <laughs> want this problem to be solved. So I'm excited for you to continue to iterate this idea. But I think this this one is for me a no. I, I, the terrain requirements sound like a turn off to me. I mean, when it gets past being a one paragraph idea, I might have yeah, better no, no, it's to fine. some of those questions. <laughs> Let us not scratch too deep on any of these ideas. There's not much below them. <laughs> That's not the point. All right, so one more each? No, two more. Each. Um, two. That's three. So if we said five. All right, so two more each. Let's uh, do a couple rapid fire ones here then. So um, I've got a couple to choose from. So I uh, am realizing with increasing certainty that I like um, uh, 
big models and vehicles more than I like uh, infantry. And the more infantry I collect, the more I realize I don't paint infantry, I paint massive robots and monsters and, uh, and vehicles and so on. So um, what I would love to see on the table uh, is a game called Mythic Hunter, where it's essentially a, an excuse to have a huge monster model of the week and to buy and paint another monster model and that this would be a David and Goliath uh, type of a setup where uh, the monster was AI controlled and you had the ability to uh, influence it by the things that you do um, but ultimately it's about um, can you coordinate a set of um, squeaky heroes to uh, take down something terrifying um, and that is already a thing in stuff like um, particularly uh, Kingdom Death Monster, but I would love to see it in an analog, um, you know, tape measures type situation and um, uh, yeah, and with, with more of a DIY aesthetic and with a system that doesn't, didn't require uh, oodles of components uh, to drive the AI and so on. So yeah, Mythic Hunter, a, uh, a, a game of monster hunting. I mean, I don't have the ongoing <laughs> obsession with enormous miniatures that you do. Um, I, 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 I would consider playing it with your miniatures, but <laughs> it, it, any, anything that required me to, 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 to sort of, to pull out a massive miniature, I, I would be, I would be disinclined to go towards. I'd like, I'd, I, I love the idea of like, um, Shadow of the Colossus. Yeah. Sort of stuff go. I think, um, uh, Skulk Hollow, I don't know if you've seen that, it's a board game that sort of does mm. Shadow of the Colossus. Mm -hmm. um, if it was, if there was a monster of that level of epicness and, and it was that level of thing, I would, I would want to play it and I would want to steal miniatures <laughs> off you to play More it. insane terrain requirements from Glenn Ford. <laughs> Wait, it, it, well, you, you know, built yeah, a this... modular moving giant robots demon board that you could actually if, walk across. Then I would. If play. I, but no. If less. I, if I, if I can <laughs> clamber up the monster at various points during the game, and it matter where I'm stood on it as I drive, you know, the the knife in, then mm. absolutely. If if uh, it requires me to have a massive monster and and uh, skirmish around it, probably less inclined. Mm. Um, all right, another quick one. Um, like five years ago or something, roughly, um, there's uh, I don't even, uh, there was a uh, fantastic store called Sniper's Nest, uh, over in Ramsgate that has since shut down. And the chap who run it, um, was investing uh, a lot of what he had into a hammer horror skirmish game. Um, got a lot of the uh, artwork and the miniatures together. Got the permission of the Peter Cush the, it, Peter Cushing while he was alive, I believe. So it might be longer than five. It is longer than five years ago for definite. Now I said that, um, but also had the permission of their estate. Never went anywhere with it. Point is, I wrote a, a skirmish game which was a Hammer Horror Simulator skirmish game. And I've since been going through my files a couple of weeks ago and it's this fully sort of written out thing. And I've pulled it out and it's like, I had this, the, the issue with a lot of horror games is you've got vampires fighting humans and it's all balanced. So a human has a reasonable chance of taking down a vampire on turn one. That doesn't happen in vampire movies. The last girl or van helsing whoever it is takes down all the vampires um and until that point the humans sort of and so it's a game that works around the fact that um it actually tries to recreate what happens in humans versus werewolf movies or humans versus vampire movies or vampires versus werewolf movies rather than being an inherently take two forces they are balanced line up on the tabletop kill each other and it will be themed to to, to this world. And it's, so that, it's, yeah. it's an adversarial... It's one highly one asymmetrical, game. highly narrative, and entirely adversarial. Um, so you, yeah. you would... All right, so the, yeah, this sort of this sounds like um, sort of in a, in a similar ballpark to Perilous Tales in that it's trying to create something very asymmetrical, but um, it's highly adversarial. Yep. I love asymmetrical skirmish games so much. Um, so I am... I'm a definite yes on this one. I love hammer horror. I love asymmetrical things. I love narrative things. I'll have to tell me more. I'll have to get it typed up because it's handwritten. I will type it up at some point and throw it at you. Uh, last one from you. 
Uh, the last one for me, um, I'm going to go with this one because it should be an easy sell. So uh, the name of this game is uh, uh, lic official license um, pending. <laughs> Robot Wars, the skirmish game. <laughs> okay, yes. I mean, Need I say it I mean, yeah, obviously. Uh, why is that not still on TV? That was one of the best things. <laughs> <laughs> the last so the, inten the intention being that you scratch build something about the size of a Hot Wheels car, that kind of scale. Um, you scratch build something, you put weapons weapons and so on it there's a very modular build system and clearly there is a you know ongoing campaign um you know damage and and and, and gear acquisition system and it's a rampaging robots um system of spinning around and uh, buzzsawing each other and um probably uh probably ends up having a bit more of a detailed damage system than i normally put into my games because whether or not you've got an oil leak or you've got an axe currently stuck in the side of you matters um so yeah robot wars the skirmish game would you play that i mean who wouldn't um it, i mean it's it's yeah that's an obvious everyone's gonna play that definitely uh last one for me very quick one i know mild cheats not gonna be a skirmish game because it's the next sort of vague idea for a box game that i'm excited about but haven't figured out yet um callously yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll workshop it we'll turn it into a miniature skirmish game as we go <laughs> i mean uh callously thieving some brilliant mechanics from a, a couple of other games namely maiden's quest and palm island uh, look them up because they're, they're, they're genius. Um, basically, a single deck that you can hold in your hand, you go through the deck um, and it tells a story of going through the first idea is a haunted house. Uh, it, it probably because I've got artwork assets for it will end up being a sort of deserted space station. Mm. Um, you can upgrade cards uh spinning them and flipping them as you spin and flip them they're going to give you bonuses for the next time you cycle through the deck but not the current time mm -hmm. uh you can all alternatively store them as resources and this is the thing oh blatantly stolen from palm island by sliding the card sideways so it pokes out the side of the deck so when you come across a card, you have the opportunity to engage with it and spin or flip it, or you have the opportunity to store it as a resource so it literally pokes out the deck. And so you've got the whole deck running through in your hand. And then when you spend the resource off of a card to upgrade another card when you come across it, you spin that background into the deck. And so you're running through this single deck. Everything is sort of built into it and it um, tells its own story and runs on its own system by doing that. Lovely. Uh, yes. So I um, it, it, for some reason, it puts me in mind of the moments in Dead Space, the video game, where you come back through a location that you've been in, and it is much more decayed and descend into madness. Abs absolutely. I always want that thing where, um, whatever it's say, like Resident Evil, you're walking through, and there's so there's somebody who's half dying, but they won't quite peg it at this point so you have to leave them behind and then when you come back they croak and drop the key that they're holding mm. and it's a sort of returning to a location and the location has altered and it wasn't useful last time but it is useful this time deciding where to store it figuring out how the the rate of the cards rolls around in your hand it, that that it, is the thing that i am interested it feels in. to it feels to me like this might be a bit cheap but it feels to me like if you made that more into a fighting fantasy classic dungeon crawl thing that would be something that would that would attract a lot of attention on mm. kickstarter i mean if as i a can theme get choice if i if i can get the mechanic the mechanical body of the game working it's going to be super slottable in of uh themes and ideas you can run it as a as a dungeon crawl you can run it as a haunted house you can run it as an abandoned space station so if i can if i can get the mechanical body rolling then it's something that can have different stories and different places uh slotted onto it so that's that's an idea that's a a two years away minimum idea that i'm rolling on love it love it i would definitely play that i'm uh, my my mind is already writing about uh, the, all the possibilities there Great. Fantastic. And that's not even the end of the list because I, I ended up with a bunch of other things that uh, are scavenged. But I guess that is possibly the point of this conversation is um, there's loads of ideas. Keep having ideas yeah. and writing them down. Uh, and you don't yes. necessarily have to 
pin all of your hopes to one of them or even bother developing them beyond Robot Wars colon <laughs> skirmish game, which yeah, I'm actually really excited to go and figure out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah a lot of these ideas people aren't going to see and there's a whole nother don't be yeah if, the, if this is about giving people advice don't be pressured about your ideas talk to them about somebody talk to them on youtube to the world um get them out give them life um see if they see if they play you know if they don't roll them through for the next one if they do have fun with them um, the other thing to do is obviously to yeah smash them out in some kind of PDF and put them up on the website. Um, so I tell you what, uh, challenge Glenn. Um, uh, within a month of whenever this video drops, uh, let's have a, a playable version of one of these ideas each. Okay. Yes. That that that. that we'll, is the uh, we'll do content. we'll do a further conversation where we uh, where we have a little look at what we got to on our very first version of these two uh, these two ideas. Fantastic. Okay. Uh, well, it's brilliant uh, chatting as always, Mike. Um, uh, wherever you're uh, viewing this video, there's going to be uh, links nearby to places that you can look us up and chat to us. If um, if not, hit us up on Instagram. Uh, Manakink Games One uh, is my Instagram handle. Mike is on. I do know it's Crikey Miles. I just like, you know, giving the opportunity to say it. Mike is on Crikey Sorry, Miles. Sorry, literally in my brain, I was going, Robot Wars, Robot Wars, Robot Wars, Robot Wars. And I was thinking about the model that I was going to build for Robot Wars. Find me on Crikey Miles and follow the progress of my scratch Robot Wars miniatures. Brilliant. Um, if you're watching this on uh, the Tabletop Gaming uh, Spring Showcase, thanks for stopping by. Look up Rule of Carnage on YouTube. We're going to be putting out content on a regularly, uh, relatively regular basis. Uh, you almost said screen. regularly scheduled. Regularly scheduled. There's no schedule. Right, yes, it's just, back it's to just your regularly scheduled uh, <laughs> taste of uh, taste of carnage. Um, yeah, we we'll love to see you in the next video. Uh, this is going to be a podcast somewhere as well at some point. So look us up, give us comments, tell us what you'd like to see us talking about. Shout at us about the dumb ideas that we've just suggested and which ones you most want to see us. Uh, punch up somewhere online for you to uh, have fun with and until next time uh, thanks for stopping in and uh, we'll we'll see you on the next video thanks okay bye bye